In this video, we'll code a system of linear equations into a matrix. We'll then solve the system of linear equations in a systematic way, using tricks like adding two equations together or multiplying an equation by a constant. As we solve the system of equations, we'll perform equivalent manipulations on the rows of the matrix, and we'll see that ultimately, Solving the system of linear equations is equivalent to getting the matrix in a particularly nice form. Here's the system of linear equations that we want to solve. We've got three variables, a, b, and c, and three equations. I'm going to start by rewriting the equations in a more standard form by making sure the terms with the variables a, b, and c are all on the left side in a, b, c order, and the constants are all on the right side. The first two equations are already in that order, but the third equation I'll rewrite as negative 2a plus b minus c equals 0. Now, I could write that same information a little more concisely with an array or matrix of numbers by just recording the coefficients of a, b, and c, and then the constant term on the right. I'm omitting writing down the variable names themselves, a, b, and c, but no information is lost because the order of the numbers, the order of the coefficients, is in a, b, c order. With the constant terms on the right side of the equations in the far right column of the matrix. To solve this system of linear equations, I'm going to use tricks like adding multiples of one equation to another equation. But the arithmetic will work out simpler if I make use of equations that have coefficients of 1 in front of my variables. To keep things better organized, I'm going to actually switch the order of these two equations. So I'll just copy down my equations. Over on the matrix side, this is equivalent to just switching the orders of row 1 and row 2. Now I'm going to try to eliminate the variable a in the second and third equations. I can do this by adding twice the first equation to one time the second equation, and then replacing equation 2 with this sum. Similarly, I can add twice the first equation to equation 3 and replace equation 3 with that sum. So first I'll just copy down my equation 1 because it's not changing. Now equation 2 gets replaced with, let's see, negative 2a plus 2a gives me 0 times a, so there's no a term, which is what I want. Uh, twice b plus 3 times b is 5 times b. Twice 5 times c plus 4 times c gives me 14c. And for the constant term, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. Similarly, I'm going to add twice this first equation to the third equation. Again, that eliminates my a. I get 2b plus b, which is 3b. And twice 5c minus c, that's 10c minus c, which is 9c. And the constant term is twice 2 plus 0, which is 4. Over on the matrix side, the same thing would be to multiply twice row 1 and add that to row 2 and replace row 2 with that, and then twice row 1 plus row 3 and replace row 3 with that. That gives me the first row, same row, row 1 as before. The second row is going to have 2 times 1 minus 2 is 0. 2 times 1 plus 3 is 5, 2 times 5 plus 4 is 14, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. Same idea for twice the row 1 plus row 3, 0, 3, 9, and 4. Notice that I've really done the same thing with both the equations and the matrices, and so it makes sense that if I just read off the coefficients of the equations here, I get the numbers in my matrix, whereas I have zeros where I'm missing the a altogether in the equations. Now I've eliminated the variable a from the second and third equations. Next I'd like to use one of these two equations to eliminate variable b from an equation. 
if one of these equations happened to have a coefficient of 1 already, I would use that equation because it would be easy to work with. But since they don't, I'll just use the second equation and make it have a coefficient of 1 in front of the b by multiplying it by 1 fifth. In other words, I'm going to take equation 2, multiply it by 1 fifth, and replace equation 2 with that. So I'll copy down the other two equations unchanged and replace the second equation with a fifth of it. So that gives me b plus 14 fifths c equals 1. Of course, I can do the same thing on the matrix side by taking 1 fifth of row 2 and replacing row 2 with it. Now I'm in a position to use equation 2 to eliminate the variable b from equation 3. I can do that by taking negative 3 times equation 2, adding it to equation 3, and replacing equation 3 by it. On the matrix side, this corresponds to taking negative 3 times row 2 plus row 3 and replacing row 3 by it. For variety, I'm going to do the matrix side first this time. The first two rows just get copied as they are. Then the third row gets replaced by negative 3 times the second row plus a third row. So negative 3, well, the zeros just be, stay as 0, because negative 3 times 0 plus 0 is 0. And then negative 3 times 1 plus 3 gives me 0, which was the whole point to eliminate that b variable. Now I have negative 3 times 14 fifths plus 9. So that's a little tricky arithmetic here. Let's see, negative 3 times 14 fifths plus 9, which is 45 fifths. So I think this works out to negative 42 fifths plus 45 fifths, which is 3 fifths. And finally, negative 3 times 1 plus 4, that one's a little easier, that adds up, up to 1. The work on the equation side is pretty similar, so I'll just write it down quickly. I'm making a lot of progress because now I have an equation with just c in it. So if I multiply that equation by the reciprocal of the coefficient, so by 5 thirds, I'll have isolated c and solve for c. The first two equations I'll just leave as is for now. I can also do this on the matrix end. Now I've got my system of equations in a nice triangular form with all three variables in the first equation, only the last two variables in the second equation, and only the last variable in the third equation, where the leading variables all have coefficients of 1. Similarly, on the matrix side, I've got a, a bunch of zeros in the bottom left triangle with 1s along this diagonal. In the next steps, I'm going to work my way back up the equations by using this happy third equation to eliminate c from the first and second equations, and then using equation 2 to eliminate b from the first equation. So let me grab a little more space. To eliminate c from the second equation, I'll need to add the second equation to negative 14 fifths, the third equation, that'll make the coefficients match. Or on the matrix side, I'll take row 2 minus 14 fifths row 3 and replace row 2 with that. I'll do the matrix side first. So row 1 and row 3 don't get changed, so I'll just copy those down. And now I'll fix up row 2. So let's see, 0 minus 14 fifths 0 is still 0. And if I do 1 minus 14 fifths 0, that's still 1. So those haven't changed. The next piece, 14 fifths minus 14 fifths times 1, that equals 0 like I wanted it to be. And finally, the real content here is that I'm going to take 1 minus 14 fifths times 5 thirds. So that it simplifies to 1 minus 14 thirds, which is 3 thirds minus 14 thirds or minus 11 thirds. So that's what goes in this space here. If we did it with equations, we'd be going through the same process. Now we've actually solved for both b and c, and I still need to eliminate c from the first equation and b from the first equation to solve for a. 
I'll eliminate C first by replacing equation one with equation one minus five times equation three, or the equivalent thing with matrix rows. So when I do equation one minus five times equation three, that's as far as the A terms, that's A minus five times no A's. So that's just A. For the B's, it's B minus five times no B's. So that's gonna be just the B. And here I have 5C minus 5 times C, so that's no C's. I'll just leave a blank for the C's. And for the constant term, I have 2 minus 5 times 5 thirds. That's the same as 6 thirds minus 25 thirds, which is minus 19 thirds. So I have minus 19 thirds here, and I can copy the other two equations down. The equivalent thing happens on the matrix side. And finally, I'll eliminate B from the first equation by adding the first equation and minus the second equation. So let's see, I get A plus B minus B. That gets rid of the B and leaves just the A on the left side. And on the right side, I'm going to do minus 19 thirds minus negative 11 thirds. So that's minus 19 thirds plus 11 thirds, which is minus 8 thirds on the right side. Same thing happens to the first row on the row side. 1, 0, 0, minus 8 thirds. And the other rows or equations just get copied down. Notice that now I can very easily read off my solution from my equations but I can also read it off from my matrix. One times A equals negative 8 thirds, one times B is negative 11 thirds, and one times C is 5 thirds. To solve our system of linear equations, we use three operations. We swapped the order of equations. We added multiple a multiple of one equation to another equation and replaced an equation with that. And we multiplied an equation by a constant. We can similarly use these operations on the matrix form of the system of equations by swapping rows, adding a multiple of a row to another row, and multiplying a row by a constant. By applying these operations systematically, we can end up with a matrix that just looks like ones and zeros with the solution to the system over in the far right column. This corresponds to solving our system of equations and getting answers for A, B, and C.